Hello and welcome to this lecture in the course for Secure Systems Engineering. In the previous two lectures, what we had seen was how an attacker could inject code in the stack of another process by exploiting a buffer overflow vulnerability and then force that particular code to execute. Later on, we seen two defense mechanisms for th this particular vulnerability. The first was using canaries where buffer overflows were detected. The second is using something known as the NX bit, which is supported by the processors. As we have seen in the previous lecture, the NX bit would disable executing from that stack. However, security has always been a cat and mouse game. The attackers would find a way to create an exploit and then the defenders uh, would then find a way to prevent that particular exploit from running on their system. Now the attackers again uh, would find a way to bypass uh, these defense mechanisms and still get their attack to run. So in this way there is a uh, constant cycle between the attackers and defenders and as a result uh, the attacks are getting more and more powerful and thereby better defense strategies are required to prevent these attacks. In this particular lecture, what we will look at is a new form of attack known as the return to libc attack. So this particular attack also exploits a buffer overflow vulnerability in the stack. However, unlike the previous exploit that we have seen where code is executed from the stack, in this particular attack, we do not execute any code from the stack. And in this way, uh, the attack would run even with the NX bit defense that is present for that particular stack. So let us see how this uh, attack proceeds. Let us start off by understanding what libc is. So libc is a dynamically linked library that gets attached to almost every C program uh, that is written. Now uh, the libc contains implementations of all the standard um, rather a large number of the standard C function calls that we are typically used to. For example, string copy, printf, scanf, fopen, fclose, uh, stringcat and so on are all present in libc. So there are easily over 1000 functions that are implemented in libc. Even the simple hello world program that we have written a few uh, lectures back which essentially just uh, prints hello world by invoking the printf statement. Even this program has the libc uh, present in its virtual address space. For example, if we look at this particular si slide which uh, displays the virtual memory map for the hello world program, we see that there are three entries corresponding to libc. So these three entries correspond uh, to the entire libc. Now libc has uh, as I mentioned over a thousand uh, different functions and all of these functions are present in uh, this virtual address map and can be accessed by any of these addresses that are present over here. So given that we know what libc is, let us see how a return to libc attack actually works. So just like the previous attack where the attacker overflowed a buffer and made the return address point to the starting location of that particular buffer on the stack. In a similar way, the return to libc attack would overflow the buffer and then replace the return address with some other arbitrary address. However, this arbitrary address is now pointing to some particular function in the libc. So as we know, libc is part of the code segment of the particular process and therefore it can execute. In other words, the NX bit is not set for the functions in libc. So what happens over here is assuming that this function f1 is a valid function in libc, we are overflowing the buffer until the point where the return address, rather the valid return address which was present on the stack is replaced with the address for f1 which in fact uh, is present in the code segment of the particular process. 
So in this way, we are able, able to subvert execution and in spite of the nx bit set, we are able to execute some arbitrary function present in the libc. So the next question is what should be this function f1? So there are multiple options that are um, possible. So one option that we will actually look at today is known as the system function. So one function that we will look at for f1 is the function system. Now system is a function uh, which is present in libc. So it takes a string as input rather it takes a pointer to a string as input and this string contains an executable. So for example, over here we have system and we are passing the string slash bin slash bash. So the result of this particular function call would be that a bash shell gets created. Now let us say that we want to uh, build a payload which as before creates a shell. This would mean that we would require to subvert execution by a function like this uh, like system and pass uh, the slash bin slash bash as the parameter to system. So this means we require two things. We need to specify the address for system uh, as the f1 address and overflow the buffer using that particular uh, address of system. Secondly, somehow we should be able to pass a pointer to this particular string slash bin slash bash uh, so that system executes and it is able to obtain an argument which is slash bin slash bash. So to summarize what we need to mount a return to libc attack is as follows. We need to find the address of the system function in the libc. Second, we need to overflow the a buffer with this particular address so that the return address located on the stack is replaced by the address of system. Secondly, we need to pass the argument to system which essentially is a pointer to the string slash bin slash bash. So let us see how this can take place. So what we need essentially is uh, the stack layout which looks something like this. At the location where the return address is stored, we store the address of the system. Secondly, uh, at an offset of 4 bytes higher in the stack, we have a character pointer which points to some location in the virtual address space where the string slash bin slash bash is present. Now what happens here is that when the function completes its execution and returns, the return address is taken from the stack. In this case, the return address is the system. Execution goes into the system function present in libc and the argument for this particular function is this character pointer pointing to slash bin slash bash. So this function system in libc would essentially execute the executable slash bin slash bash. So the next thing that we need to determine is the address of system and what exactly is this particular pointer. So let us start with how we find out where in the entire virtual address space is this particular function system present. So this we can do as follows, we can use something like gdb or any other tool like uh, obj dump or so on and uh, run this uh, gdb with this option and the executable and uh, we set a breakpoint at main, run the program and uh, um, when the breakpoint is hit, we say p system which means print system and as we see over here, we get this value uh, of this particular thing which is 2808-85260, which essentially is the address of the location where the system function is present. In a similar way, we can find somewhere in the entire executable where the string slash bin slash bash is present. So in this particular example over here, we have considered the environment variables that is present in the process. So as we see over here, there is one particular line in these environment variables which actually has the string slash bin slash bash. Now what we need to find out is by using uh, something like gdb 
we determine the exact address where slash bin slash bash is present. Now that we have identified where the address of system is present and also we have found a string in the executable which contains slash bin slash bash and we found the address of that particular string, we are ready to build our exploit. So, what we do is as follows. We overflow the buffer and at the location where the return address uh, was present, we replace it with this particular address 0x280 85260 which essentially is the address for the system function present in libc and at an offset of uh, 4 bytes um, on the stack we have the address bf bff e25 which essentially is the pointer to the slash bin slash bash string that we have found out in the environment. So, when this particular program runs, we would have the bash slash bin slash bash getting executed. Now, in order that we terminate this particular program properly, what we can additionally do is add a function exit over here, which essentially uh, has the address 281130d0. So, therefore, what happens now is the system function executes. Uh, it takes the slash bin slash bash pointer uh, as argument and after that function uh, completes this particular function which points to the exit function would get executed. So, in this way we are able to subvert execution to the system uh, function present in libc. We are able to run a payload which in this case is the slash bin slash bash shell and then also exit from this particular program. One major advantage of the return to libc attack is that it can work with a non-executable stack. However, there is a major limitation of the return to libc attack. The limitation is that the attacker is constrained by the functions that the libc offers. For example, if the libc does not have a system function, then the attack which, which we have discussed uh, in this particular lecture will not function. Thus, there is a limitation to what the attacker can do. In the next lecture, we will look at another attack known as the return oriented programming or the ROP attack, where the attacker is not restricted to the functions that libc supports, but rather can uh, create any arbitrary play payloads. Thank you.